Hello, it is the Nisha Jackson Show. Thank you for being here. My name is Rusty Embry. She is Dr. Nisha Jackson. And uh, I just got back from uh, Orlando, Florida. That's why I have my, my podcaster t-shirt. Nisha, I went to... Yay! Hey, it's pod- so nice. I love it. You like that? You look, you look so podcaster smart right now. I know. I pod- terrific. I don't know what that is. <laughs> anyway, so the good news is is that we've got more things coming for you, the viewer and the listener, and uh, we've got some new th- cool things coming. So just stick around. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast, whether you're watching on video or listening to it, Facebook, YouTube, iHeart, uh, iTunes, Apple Podcast, whatever it is. Uh, we appreciate you, but subscribe and share this with people if you would. I am a little... Um, I'm a little tired, so I got my uh, oh, no. my diet Stop coke. Stop right now! <laughs> and um, I, you, don't you don't really have get that garbage in your house. You no. know what really gets me going no, is double stuff either. Oreos. <laughs> I got I got some double stuff Oreos. So obviously, have I'm, I not? <laughs> have I not taught you anything? Obviously, Seriously. I'm paying attention to the show a lot. No, um, <laughs> today we want to talk about sugar. So I have something. With sugar, the double stuff, and then something to counteract that sugar, according to the commercials, the zero sugar Diet Coke. So, um, how am I doing? Well, you know, I'm going to stop telling you ahead of time what my topics are because you just, you just, you just mess it all up by eating all that garbage in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> That's not what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And when I complain going, this is the picture of low testosterone here, um, <laughs> now we know why, right? That's a good suggestion of what's the problem. Right, right. Well, that's a good lead-in. Thanks, Russ. I really, pre- I really appreciate that. So, <laughs> so sugar is evil. <laughs> Let's just get sugar right to it. Lie. Sugar is the sugar food is of the devil. <laughs> it's a lie. It is light and it's hidden in everything. So I, I want to do a show today. This is going to be super short, but I want to talk about the hidden sugars in foods. Okay. Right? Because why is it important to think about sugar? Uh, I don't, because it's bad for me. <laughs> well, it's bad for you because we sugar is, is ubiquitous, right? It's like everywhere. It's in all of our foods. It's hidden in foods. People don't know how to read labels. They don't know how to interpret the sugar in foods, which we're going to talk about today. Well, heck, even if you uh, do know how to read the labels, the labels aren't always accurate, right? Well, you're right. There could be some inaccuracies in labels for sure. That's that's a topic we should flat out lie to us. Right. Well, that's that could happen. Mm -hmm. But but here's the deal: is that when you have a high sugar diet you're going to make more insulin. When you make more insulin, you're going to store fat at a higher rate. When you store fat at a higher rate, you're going to have more fat around your midsection. You're going to have the big muffin top going on, right? It ain't pretty, okay? We, we don't want that as we age. You're going to be at a higher risk for heart disease, higher risk for diabetes. You're not going to feel so great. It's going to affect your hormone levels. It's really just an unhealthy thing to partake in. So I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about where is sugar hiding okay. and why do we need to know more about it? How do we even calculate that? So I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little quiz today to, well, just be kind of like a quiz between you and I, but people can kind of listen along and figure out how many grams of sugar are in certain foods. Because I think it's, I think it's, it's time to wake up and not, not believe the lie anymore about sugar. All right, I'm in. I'm in I'll play oh. your game. Oh, one more thing. One more thing I want to say. Sugar is a depressant. So I I thought it makes you feel better and gets you more energy when you need it. It does, but only for a little while, and then it drops again. So the reason why people are addicted to sugar, and and, and, and some experts, addiction experts, hypothesize, that the sugar addiction is actually a stronger than a, a stronger addiction than heroin. Wow. Okay. So, um, and I could I could talk about this for a long time, but suffice to say that that sugar is a lie, and it's and it is very habitual. And when you eat sugar, it does raise serotonin. It raises the feel good hormone in your brain, and when that feel good hormone goes up, you feel happy. 
right? So you could be stressed out to the max, very angry at a couple emails you read, and you want to go right to the kitchen and start mowing on a Twinkie or a cupcake or something, sugar, something sugary. Um, and, and the problem is, is that when you eat sugar, it does work. It does raise serotonin levels and it does make you feel better, but only for a little while. And then the drop that you get after you eat sugar is worse than it was when you started. Wow. So you plummet further. And then when you eat it again, because it's habitual, hello, you're going to eat it again. When you eat it again, your insulin level not only goes up to where it went up before. Now, remember, insulin is the fat storage hormone. So not only does it go up to where it was before, it'll go higher okay. and higher and higher. So storing fat, storing fat, storing fat. Okay, I wanted to make sure you knew that. So let's talk about how do you interpret sugar in food. So I'm gonna, I wish I had a little... Um, I, I should have done a little experiment in front of y'all today. Four teaspoons of sugar, I mean, uh, four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon. So when you read on the back of a label and it says four grams of sugar, that's equivalent to one teaspoon, one flat, not rounded, one flat leveled off teaspoon of sugar. Okay. So... If a product has 32 grams of sugar in it, 32 divided by four would be eight. Eight's the number we're looking for there, Rusty. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So I didn't eight, go, I didn't finish, you know, doctor school eight, like eight, you did. <laughs> eight grams of sugar. I mean, eight, eight teaspoons of sugar. So eight teaspoons of sugar are in each serving of whatever you're looking at that has 32 grams of sugar in it. Does that make sense? It does. So why not save the time and just go and just pound the, the spoon of sugar, right? Yeah, exactly. Try I that. Was, I was thinking about this when, when my, my older brother, who I adore, his name's Terry, when he and I were little, we would have cereal, unsweetened cereal, because we didn't have sweetened cereal when we were young. What? Uh, well, we did, but we, we were never allowed to eat it. And so we would have unsweetened Rice Krispies. And we would take the Rice Krispies. And when my grandma left the room, because we would always have the Rice Krispies at her house, when she left the room, we would take the sugar bowl and we'd start putting like <laughs> teaspoons of sugar because then the sugar would kind of get on the bottom of the of the, of the the um, cereal bowl. Yeah. And then you'd take like that big teaspoon of sugar with some milk and it was so good. But <laughs> But so we would put like two or three teaspoons of sugar on the cereal and we thought we were being so naughty, like so bad and so sneaky. Yeah. But that's nothing compared to how much sugar is in foods today. Because just like I said, if it has 32 grams of sugar in it, that is eight teaspoons of sugar. Wow. So just imagine, just imagine taking a food product and putting it in front of you and taking a sugar bowl and taking eight teaspoons and putting it on top of that product because that's what you're eating wow okay so did okay, you, that's the yeah. visual that's okay. the visual i want to give you okay <clears throat> it's a good so start visual. start reading the labels and start and just remember four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon not heaping it's flattened teaspoon if it's heaping it has seven it has seven grams of sugar So, any it. idea how much one of these uh double <clears throat> stuff oreos have any guesses? You know, I don't, I don't have that here. But if you look at the package, it mm -hmm. probably tells. I could run and get it, but now nah, we don't have time for that. Yeah. But okay, probably so, it's probably not good. Right, sugary soft drinks. We're drinking most of our sugar today, Rusty. Mm -hmm. We're drinking it. So sugary soft drinks are one of the highest uh, soft drinks, but also the coffee drinks are one of the highest um, uh, doses of sugar that you can get. One, um, one 12 ounce can, uh, sugary soft drink can have 11 teaspoons of sugar in it. Just one can. The other thing is that juices out there. Now, uh, I love this study that was done many, many years ago. I, I don't know, like 10 years ago that showed that a four ounce glass of orange juice, which is what you give your children when they're coming down with a cold actually reduces their immunity by, by plummeting a, sig a significant reduction in T cell count. That's your immune system, right? Because it's got too much sugar in it. So orange so, juice is bad to give to kids when they're yes, sick. Wow. It makes them more sick, more vulnerable to sickness. We should not be giving them juice because 
juices in many in, in 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 much of this research and looking at hidden sugars, juices actually have more sugar in them than some of these sugary drinks that people are drinking. Wow. So juices juices are really really not the way to go. Let's talk about yogurt. Let's talk about yogurt. And you think, oh, yogurt's good because it's got like probiotics in it and it's really good. Yeah, for yogurt's my- good for you. Yogurt can have 47 grams of sugar in them. Wow. Or more. I've seen some with 60. Now, all you have to do is divide by four and that gives you how many teaspoons. You know, so we're talking about 13, 14 teaspoons of sugar. Okay, not not a good option. Even barbecue sauce, one tablespoon of bar- barbecue sauce can have 14 grams of sugar in it. Wow. Hello? Yeah. That's just barbecue sauce. Ketchup is the same way. Uh, like I said, fruit, fruit juice is one of the worst evils out there for sugar. Sports drinks, one 20-ounce can of sports drink can have 32 grams of sugar in it. So, so I'm not supposed to be drinking Gatorade on a hot day? Gatorade is a nightmare. Don't drink Gatorade. Even some of the vitamin waters that are out there have so much sugar in them or or flavored waters can have 8 to 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar per container. Just just try to keep the visual of 8 teaspoons going into the bottle and knowing what sugar does to you. Okay, so then the answer is is Diet Coke, zero sugar, right? That's zero calorie Diet right. Coke. Right. No. Right. That's not the right. answer. Why is that no. not? Why is that not the answer? <laughs> We're not even going to talk about the 32 chemicals that are in that Diet Coke. So and How and, many? Now, and and now the research is showing that 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 artificial sweeteners raise insulin level just like sugar. So you might as well just drink the sugary drink. So no, it doesn't do any good. So it tastes crappy and it doesn't do any good. Don't do either one. Don't do don't do either one. Okay, granola. Okay, people think that granola did granola is good for you. Right. So just a hundred grams of granola, which is not that big of a serving, can have six teaspoons of sugar in it. Just one little tiny serving. Even those little granola bars, protein bars are awful. Some protein bars are out there are so laden with sugar. Flavored so all coffee. these things that taste terrible that we eat because they're supposed to be good for us aren't doing us any good at all. Wow, I want to invent something that tastes terrible. It doesn't. Yeah, e- even iced tea. Start looking at what you're drinking. Look at the labels. Look at iced tea. Sometimes iced tea can have 40 to 50 grams of sugar in it. That's like you a don't... Snapple, but if you're brewing iced tea at home and not putting sugar in it, that's okay. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you don't read a label if you're brewing it at home, right? right so right. You're, you're, it's just El Natural because tea is actually good for you. Green tea would be awesome. Just don't add, it, don't add the sweetener. Don't add the 15 pumps of sugar at Starbucks. You know, just skip the sugar. Um, maybe carry around if you really something how you really want something sweet. Carry around some xylitol packets, or carry around some stevia packets, and those those are natural sugars that you can put in them that don't raise insulin levels, and they actually taste pretty good. What do you think about? I've seen this lately on Amazon where you put fruit in like a little basket in a bottle of water, and it sits there and it kind of steeps in there, and you can have that in all day. Is that pretty good? Or that's awesome. Okay. That's, that would be awesome. This is why I actually don't like juices because when you eat, when you, um, instead of having an apple, I actually think everybody should start their day with lemon juice in warm water. And I think they should have one apple a day. I think an apple a day is very medicinal. Okay. We could, we could do a show just on one apple a day, Rusty. Let, we should do that. Uh, okay, I would love to do that. Now, you brought up something I've heard also somebody say. Uh, warm lemon juice um, or lemon juice, warm water, and cayenne pepper. Uh, and yes. drink that in the morning. That's supposed to be very, yeah. very healthy. Yes? It, it is because it's an excellent liver tonic. And our liver's job is detoxify everything we come in contact with, everything through our skin, everything we inhale, everything we digest, everything we drink has to go through the liver for a detoxification process. If it's not detoxified appropriately, it accumulates in the fat cells of the body. Hello, we don't need toxins accumulating in our fat cells. We're already toxic enough. So so st- starting your day out with a good liver tonic, um, it can be really helpful for not only fat metabolism, but it can help you with your blood sugar it can help you with your cravings and your appetite throughout the day. It sounds like like an 18. Uh, get your tonic here. Get your <laughs> blood tonic. 
Uh, you know what? If I just was thinking of my sweet Nana today, my, my yeah. Nana at nine, almost 99, just a couple of weeks away from her 99th birthday passed wow. away. Oh, and I'm she sorry. was, she literally was vibrant up to two months before driving two months before she passed away. Like still Boy. driving. Wow. No, she got her license renewed at 98. She goes, I'm good for another six years. Yeah. <laughs> so would she drink uh, tonics like that? She, you know, that I always say we should have never strayed away from what our grandmothers or great grandmothers told us because they, they were kind of dead on, right? They were drinking from glass bottles. They weren't eating a lot of sugar. They didn't have a lot of packaged foods. They, they, they had a garden. They fixed things in their garden. They were healthy. They understood the importance of, of preparing food and sitting down and having dinner and having your biggest meal during the day instead of at night. They had it really, they had it right, but they were doing tonics. They were doing lemon water in the morning. So anyway, okay. How, how about the biscuits and gravy? My grandma did biscuits and gravy. That's probably not. <laughs> they did biscuits and gravy. That's true. Okay. The biscuits aren't that great, <laughs> but again, they weren't ODing on them like we are. No. We're just like overfeeding ourselves. How about stuff. the, how about the bacon grease on the side in the, in the bowl? No, <laughs> okay. no, dude. That so not like everything. No, seriously, that was actually good. <laughs> or cooking things in, in, in the bacon grease. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there's, there's a, it suffice to say that you guys need to become more informed about sugar. We don't want you to harm your body. We don't want you to become addicts. We don't want you to become dependent on stuff that ultimately makes you depressed, fat, irritable and then cause a hormone imbalance because that eventually is what it leads to is it imbalances all of your hormones and it stresses your system. It stresses your body. You're going to end up being on medications that you don't need to be on. So let's start paying attention to how much sugar is in the foods that we're eating. And just remember that when you put a piece of bread in your mouth, it's going to turn to sugar just as quick as a Snickers bar is in your mouth. Isn't that crazy? So bread is a quick carbohydrate. Flour products are quick carbohydrates. They will metabolize just as if it was sugar. Any so, are any breads good? I mean, I've heard like sourdough bread is better than Wonder Bread, for example. Well, the higher the fiber, the better it is. So uh, obviously Wonder Bread does not carry the same. Um, it, it carries a bigger punch as far as sugar release and, and insulin release than something like Ezekiel Bread, which is made from barley. It's very high in fiber. So obviously there's some huge differences in, in, in breads. But it's. I think it's probably the take-home message here is, we really are not cows. We do not need to be OD. <laughs> we don't need to be ODing on grain. We don't. We don't need it. Okay. So, but if you're going to have it, have a little bit of it. Use it more as a treat rather than a main staple in your diet. And I know this is hard to get away from because we were brainwashed for 20, 30 years about the food pyramid that we should be eating six to 11 bread servings a day. We were brainwashed. It wasn't true. It was it, uh, wasn't it, was, it was a thing it was, for far, from uh, like the government to sell more corn and wheat and stuff, right? It was never it was never proven by research. There's not one research study out there that showed the US RDA, RDA food, food pyramid was backed by any research. Not one study was done on this. Wow. So, uh, try to find it. It doesn't exist. Okay. So anyway, uh, it's not true and I want y'all to be healthy. I want you to have vibrant, healthy lives. I don't want you to become overweight. I want your hormones to be balanced. I I want you to feel good about yourself and not addicted to this crack stuff called sugar. <laughs> okay. Her name is Nisha Jackson, and uh, she has a great website. It's nishajackson.com. Also, peakmedicalclinic.com. Also on Twitter, at Peak Medical Clinic. You can also find her on Facebook at Peak Medical Clinic. Her book is out there as well, Brilliant Burnout. How Successful Driven Women Can Stay in the Game by Rewiring Their Bodies, Brains, and Hormones by Nisha Jackson that is available everywhere. Nisha, anything you want to say goodbye with? Start reading your labels. I'm going to repeat one more time. Four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon. So just keep that visual in your mind about how many teaspoons you want to be putting into your body and being an addict. Just think about it. It's not working for you. All right, hit the subscribe button. Tell people about the Nisha Jackson Show. Make sure you check us out. We're here every week. And uh, just subscribe here on YouTube or iTunes, Apple uh, Podcasts, uh, Google Play, uh, Radio Public, any one of the uh, hundreds of places you can find the podcast. Yes. I have one more thing I almost forgot. This is a great snack. 
You can get this in the stores. This is super seeds. Okay, this has a lot of nuts and seeds. It has a coconut flavor, which I adore. Where do you get it, that? It looks like this. You can get it in any of the stores. This is a really good snack. So instead of breaking for Oreos, you should be breaking for this. Nuts and seeds in a little cluster. They're delicious. Or possibly a little bit of these blueberries with it. Oh, Oops. okay. Super good. All right, Nisha, yeah. that's, we'll close that on that. We'll see you next time. She's Nisha Jackson, and this is the Nisha Jackson Show. <laughs>